Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome back uh, for our webinar series. Today, it is my great pleasure to welcome Stefan Brule from uh, Menard Company. Uh, Stefan is a pioneer in the field of seismic metamaterials, working in uh, soil dynamics and uh, soil structure interaction. And um, he lead the first experiment on uh, lensing of uh, surface relay waves. And uh, Stefan will give us some example, examples of um, possible implementation of um, large-scale metamaterials in civil engineering. So, Stefan. Many thanks, uh, Bogdan. So, hello, everybody. I will speak uh, my personal point of view of uh, hierarchical geomaterials and seismic materials, too. And as uh, depicted by Bogdan, uh, try to, to share um, tracks for the future implementation of this type of material in the soil. And the main subject uh, presented here is the, the collaboration with the, the Fredel Institute and uh, with Ex Marseille University. And this is a most the most important part of this presentation is about my uh, my personal research. So uh, this is a four point um, sum up uh, to start. Uh, I want to discuss. Uh, quite a long time about the validity condition of the soil and the, the situation we have to respect to, to start the discussion about uh, seismic metamaterials because most of the time it is an elastic condition and we have to, to control it uh, very seriously. And second point is about uh, the structuring soil itself. Uh, so what we are doing today on the ground transformation uh, densification or reinforcement of the soil by means of uh, a lot of uh, inclusion inside the soil. So this is a huge density of element in the soil. So it's coming, it's becoming very interesting to to wonder about the the new dynamic response of uh, this strong densification of element. And then I will discuss a little bit about uh, soil structure interaction. I have the chance to have. Uh, Professor Gazetas uh, in this uh, with, with us, and this is a pioneer in, in this situation. So it's a great honor for us uh, to have him uh, with, with, with us. Uh, and thank we you. Just, <laughs> hello, John. Thank, thank you. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. You're very kind. <laughs> so in this spirit, uh, we will discuss about a very interesting thing. Is, is in um, in this situation is the energy harvesting why because uh, for the the beginning we try to to make a very uh, ambitious thing about uh, the invisibility the seismic invisibility of the of the structure but we we realize that uh, most of uh, a new thing appear in the discussion is uh, the the way to concentrate the energy inside this uh, this very interesting uh, soil structure so maybe you can have a, a new a new avenue to develop. Uh, this is the way to to capture this energy because this is not a, this is not the objective, but the consequence. And this consequence is quite interesting. Let's have a look on the communication. We try to we try to share this information about the soil because we we try to to motivate uh, engineers in soil structure interaction because uh, we have to to better characterize a lot of things uh, because the the strategy of uh, this discipline is quite uh, understood but uh, what is missing inside this is the, the the right value to put inside the model on all the elements at the interface so this first book uh, in the left hand side of uh, of this slide is uh, is more about the discussion of the the validity of uh, parameter to to take into account on um, more in prospection where we had the chance to be published by stefan mayer uh, with two editors richard crester and sebastian geno about the metamaterial uh, itself uh, in an elastic uh, conception uh, so so please to to discuss about this but we have a theoretical approach, but we want to to remain in um, 
in the in field and to go to some earthquake and to discuss with other specialists, uh, very good Greek people. Uh, so in this uh, presentation of uh, Earthquake Engineering Research Institute about the um, Albanian earthquake uh, in Dures. This is the on the west side of uh, Albania that occurred in uh, November 2019. And the objective of this is to to try to to keep a lot of information from the field and to have a, a better analysis at the size of the building itself, not at the size of a quarter of the city, but uh, going uh, more and more in detail and to look at uh, all the effect of the change of geology, uh, the difference of foundation be between uh, two equivalent uh, building and something else. So try to, to go more in details in the understanding of uh, the effect of the dynamic response of uh, of this building so we also um, we have written a, another book with the french uh, community of uh, earthquake engineering so all this community i think is quite uh, active this way and the idea of site effect is still uh, is still growing uh, to identify the the, the main uh, a cause of uh, disaster at the surface. So what we can do with this collaboration, so with this collaboration, this is the, the map at the left hand side, uh, the geological map of uh, Albania. And you can see the, the blue star at the, the left part, this is Duress City, where the, the main damages have been observed. And in the central part of, the, of this slide, we can see uh, a job we did with the the ERI team, the the US team, and many other specialists coming from uh, from the world, and most of them uh, from uh, from Greece, and we try to to push the idea that uh, we don't have to only collect the information about the collapsing effects, uh, strong damage on the structure, but to correlate this with the soil and trying to identify. Even for this type of mission, it's quite a short mission. Try to under, try to understand the, the the soil effect, the amplification due to the to the difference of uh, filling of the valley. So we can see in the the zone number two, this is a, a, a very thick uh, position with uh, 130 meter of uh, under consolidated soil. And we can see that uh, most of the damages are um, uh, located uh, from uh, parts of this to the west on the east side, not in the central part of the element, but can realize that uh, the, the, the geology of the site is very related to uh, what we can observe at the surface. So this is a, a point of view very interesting. And, and we try to, to put for the future, uh, quite old uh, concept coming from the 80s uh, with people working on the special effect of this uh, U-shaped valley uh, with a relation with the distance, uh, the aperture of the valley and things like this. So to, to start this discussion uh, for people not coming from the the seismology, let's uh, have a look on the, on the range of frequency we are dealing with. Uh, we are located really at the, the bottom of this, uh, of this range, only around 0.1 and maximum 10 to 12 hertz for seismic waves. So it is very low, low, low uh, frequency for this community of uh, metamaterials. And as I like to remember, this is the this is the value of uh, the frequency for earthquake engineering, 0.1 to 10. Um, another specific way is the the very uh, low uh, velocity for the shear waves inside this material uh, we are looking for, uh, from uh, 60 uh, meter per second to uh, around 800 meter per second for this type of material. So we are dealing with uh, very small uh, wavelength uh, for this element is a reason we have to, to, to put uh, for wall. Uh, don't forget that this is the place for the seismic metamaterial domain, soft soil and rigid element inside. We are now not discussing about uh, rocky ground. We can do uh, 
holes, uh, cylinder holes inside the uh, inside the rocky ground too. You can observe another type of effects, but um, specifically, we are only interested in this presentation that's very by, by very very soft soil compared to the to the velocity in over part of the the inner earth. So with this um, this amazing presentation, we can see for for people not coming from earthquake engineering that uh, independently of the distance of uh, travel of seismic wave from the, the center of uh, the earth, most of the deformation and the transformation can be observed in the tens or hundreds meter coming to the surface and assuming uh, a high frequency hypothesis, we can do the analogy with the optics and looking as a ray coming from uh, the depth to the surface. Uh, this uh, seismic ray is in verticalization coming to the surface because uh, make the assumption that the soil is going softer and softer uh, to the surface. What consequence of this is that the compress compressive wave we can see in the left part of uh, the presentation uh, on the shear waves in, uh, in the right hand part. Uh, for the shear waves, uh, the displacement due to the verticalization is coming almost uh, uh, vertical and the displacement is, most of them is in the horizontal plan. So this is the reason why we speak not only, but uh, essentially about uh, this uh, component of uh, displacement at the surface. So uh, building are very uh, designed by the, the horizontal displacement, much more than for the vertical uh, one. Uh, so we are very sensitive to the, the flexion, to the bending moment. So this is the reason why we take into account uh, this component of the displacement at the surface. Uh, let's have a look on uh, the, the side effects. Uh, so I know it could be uh, could be impressive, but most of the, the amplification of the transformation is due to the contrast uh, of rigidity between the rocky ground and the, the soft soil uh, inside this type of U-shaped uh, valley, for example. Uh, a lot of uh, prestigious cities are located uh, in this type of uh, geological feature. Uh, so this is not uh, so, so, so uh, an alone uh, example. Uh, here we only, we only uh, put in, uh, in, uh, in evidence that the amplification it could be strong two, three or four times uh, the, the magnitude uh, record at uh, the base of the of this soil. So one of the main aspects also I want to to take into account in this discussion, discussion sorry, this is the, the concept of near or far field. Uh, most of the time earthquake is associated to uh, a strong deformation of the surface with uh, visible deformation uh, Till the surface, but most of the faulting effects are not concerned by something visible at the surface. Most of the time, this is a blind fault inside the sediment, and the deformation is uh, is uh, um, attenuated inside the, the, the ballium. But uh, we can have a discussion on this place because we have a lot of uh, uh, complex phenomena uh, in this place: uh, polarization. Uh, orientation of uh, the displacement and a lot of effect due to the, the vicinity of the, the focus uh, in this place. So we are only uh, place our study in the far field. So the far field the concept is that three or two, ta two uh, wavelength uh, of uh, seismic wave propagating in the crust. So it's about 10, uh, 10, 20 kilometers from the, the epicenter of the phenomena. And we consider then that uh, in this situation, the displacement uh, can uh, recover its, its initial uh, position for the soil. And this is a, some, what we call elastic condition for the soil uh, itself, so the far field. We can have some uh, topographical effect due to to the trapping of wave inside uh, the, 
small hills and things like that. But this is not the, the discussion. You can see what 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 it is a, a displacement at the surface as a, in a rush first earthquake in the illustration uh, in the bottom part of the slides. We are dealing with a one meter uh, displacement uh, horizontally. So another aspect very important is the um, uh, the contradiction uh, on the antagonism uh, between amplification and attenuation. You can see in this prestigious um, graph uh, elaborated by Idris in the 90s um, with the example of the Loma Prieta earthquake that uh, le, we can have compared to the, the rocky ground in depth. We can have a, a, an amplification of the acceleration at the surface uh, from one, two, or three times uh, in comparison. But for a very strong earthquake and strong acceleration uh, at the base of the sediment column, uh, the attenuation can be uh, dominant too. So we have to place our study uh, in, this, in the situation of the amplification for us. Uh, but the amplification is quite a problem. So because we want to, to detect a very, uh, very small phenomena at the surface and we can uh, have a, a strong pollution of the amplification uh, to detect what we want to, to observe in the structure soil too. So, so we have to, to clearly and very uh, identify clearly a good site for all type of ex experimentation in this size. Another aspect, and I will finish for uh, this uh, element uh, for the first uh, part of this presentation. This is the nonlinearity of the soil according to the, the magnitude of the, the shear strain applied to, to the element. Uh, one of the consequences of this is that the, the shear modulus uh, G is not constant according to the, the intensity of the, the deformation. Uh, so, we have uh, to, to deal in the elastic condition for seismic structure soil uh, with a deformation from 10 minus 6 to 10 minus 4. Uh, in, if we respect this, we are still in small deformation, small, small strain. So the condition of elasticity is quite good. Uh, if we are overpassing this value, uh, the strain is so large, we're going to the failure. Um, we are not in the in the situation of interest, as depicted in the in the upper part of this uh, of this slide. You can see that the the soil obviously is solid, made of solid grain, water, and waves. It's a, a viscoelastic metamaterial, so we can have the, the same description of a pure elastic element. But we made the assumption of uh, elastic condition. So to conclude with this. Um, it could be very difficult to have a, a constant mechanical system made of foundation, soil, and building with a, a global envelope of this element. And we have to, to be sure that all this uh, composite element made of uh, concrete, soil, and or, uh, uh, or steel, uh, these uh, remain in elastic condition. But we can see uh, in the next picture that it's not so easy to obtain and to control. Uh, in earthquake engineering, we are uh, found of two of a way to this to to discouple the phenomena. We are not always able to to modelize uh, the whole structure of the soil, the propagating on the on the element at the surface. Um, we used to to describe two two effects in soil. This is the kinematic effect. Kinematic effect is the the ground deformation, we decided to have the profile of uh, the displacement uh, from the surface to the base. And associated to this, we have a dynamic response at the surface. Uh, and this is this uh, accelerogram is uh, the, the value we put at the base of the building. And the interest of the structure saw is to modify this dynamic response at the surface, uh, taking into account the um, the wall thickness of the element, uh, but also the structure soil, uh, and to have a, a new displacement uh, uh, depicted in the, in the middle part of this element. And the consequence of this is to, to observe uh, an equivalent problem of uh, horizontal uh, lo loading uh, for, for, the, for the structure to design. 
and to obtain the, the, the objective is to obtain a, a value of, uh, of horizontal uh, force uh, lower than the initial one uh, before uh, modifying the soil. So why uh, all this concept uh, is quite uh, difficult to control because uh, when we go uh, on field after an earthquake, we can observe uh, this type of structure, a bridge at uh, Watsonville in California after the Loma Prieta earthquake in 1989. So we can see that uh, this is the perfect, um, the perfect oscillator element because uh, we have a mass and a mass um, with a pile and uh, with a good capacity of, uh, of bending and twisting uh, during the, the earthquake and the, the loading at the basement at the foundation is quite uh, important. Uh, if we have a pile, uh, this is uh, the case uh, uh, we can see in the, in the middle part. So the, the effort, the loading is so important that the soil is plastifying around uh, the pile. So this is not uh, the integrity of the pile uh, we are discussing, but uh, the, the capability of the soil to resist to the horizontal uh, effort. So the bending moment is so important in this example that uh, obviously the soil is going out of its elastic range. So when we are speaking about oscillator at the surface, uh, we have to don't have to forget that uh, it could be sometimes very difficult to have all the conditions of elasticity for all the system. Uh, the structure could, could be in the elastic domain, but uh, not, uh, not always the soil in this situation. So after this, uh, this first decade, uh, we are concluded about uh, three main uh, ways to, to interact with the, the earthquake in this sense. The first one is uh, the classical one is uh, try to resist to the uh, imposed loading by the, the earthquake uh, in the base of uh, pseudo static equivalent uh, model of this element. So applying um, a loading force uh, to the structure and try to, to resist or, or not only resist, but trying to, to decide uh, where the plastic uh, hinges uh, have, to be, have to be located. Uh, so this is the, the main concept of the, the base design engineering in, this, in that sense. That's okay, and uh, it's good. It's uh, we don't have to to to, to modify this uh, this way to to design today, uh, but we have decided to to enhance a little bit the way to characterize the the modification of the propagation in the structure soil. This is the the objective of this presentation too. In the middle part. This is the, the usual uh, approach of the flexibility, uh, well known by um, ancient people in, uh, in Japan and many other countries. Uh, and this is the way to uh, interact with, um, with a certain type of uh, building. We decided to put seismic insulators at the basement of the structure to modify the equivalent period of the system and to go to uh, to less horizontal effort to apply to the structure. This is the flexible, an approach of flexibility in this sense, but not, not only. The, the third conception uh, bring um, in, um, in 2006 by uh, John Pedri and Professor Sherig and Smith. Uh, this is the idea of uh, modifi modifying the, the, the propagation medium and to define equivalent property to uh, elements around uh, this uh, inner circle and to observe what is the consequence of the propagation uh, thanks to uh, transformational optics on this place. And going to this uh, aspect, uh, three, three, four, five years ago, uh, this is the idea is to, to, to use the, the lo localization of the resonance of elements put at the surface it could be a, a building or a tree in a forest and try to to point out uh, the condition to to modify uh, the polarization of the of, of a surface wave for example or to modify the the direction of propagation in this example uh, uh, brought by Colombie Roux, uh, Kolki, Trusha Cruster, and Sebastian Guénaud. Uh, the concept is to uh, have an equivalent aspect of, uh, 
the wave is not uh, remaining at the surface but going inside the, the earth so the this is the consequences of the uh, a diminution of the energy applied to all the elements uh, of the surface so deterring or changing the polarization excuse me from the orthograph at the end. so let's have a look about um, the way to structure the soil every day uh, below on above the surface and why we have good reason to explore uh, the interaction between all these elements and in the ground improvement uh, company as Menard company uh, or many others uh, the idea is to transform the soil uh, the the first uh, the first approach is to densify the soil the densification is very uh, good for um, for the liquefaction and phenomena uh, of soil and the earthquake disturbance for example uh, we have the possibility to to create uh, immediately the liquefaction at this point so we have uh, mitigate this uh, this phenomena in case of uh, of earthquake. Uh, the advantage of the ground densification is that we have real properties of, after the densification. This is not exactly the case for the ground reinforcement because the ground reinforcement is dealing with um, a vertical load most of the time, and the vertical load is uh, interacting with um, some pillar inclusion in the soil. Uh, and um, by means of uh, a platform uh, layer uh, between uh, the foundation and the ground reinforced. So this concept is very, very effective for the vertical load because we could obtain a, a young modulus uh, in the vertical di direction improved by the, the concept. But uh, we have not so explored the effect of this uh, vertical densification by means of fusion on the dynamic response of uh, the concept. Uh, the way uh, we practice is to say uh, we have a new uh, material um, in static condition, so it can resist in the case of pseudo-static uh, condition. That's good. We don't have to, to modify this uh, way to do, but this is not uh, in the dynamics uh, condition most of the time. So it's, we don't have all the... the the possibility to describe wave in complex media uh, with this way to, to react. So the clamp model of um, an oscillator put inside um, a rigid basement uh, soil uh, with a perfect clamping uh, condition is not uh, the true. Obviously, as we have seen in a previous uh, slide, we have to take into account the fact that the soil is reacting with the the loading uh, um, imposed by the, the structure. So uh, we have to, to use the, the contacts on, on, the, on six, uh, six degree of liberty, three in translation, three in rotation. In this example, it's only three, two in translation and one in rotation. And we have to input a value to design the, the impedance, uh, KH, KV, KM, uh, depending of the frequency. Uh, the constant part of this element uh, have been described uh, many years ago uh, by prestigious uh, researcher, uh, among them uh, Professor Gazetas. So we have the perfect knowledge of uh, the interaction of this. So this is the, 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 the principle has been translated in the, the US code uh, to define uh, uh, the interaction soil structure. So it's very, very, very effective. Uh, so, but what is very interesting is to see that uh, these elements are frequency dependent too, and they can have uh, an interaction each other. And what we try to to develop in uh, in specific uh, studies, say maybe uh, according to the distance between each element in a urban city, this is not a, a new uh, concept. Uh, in the uh, twenty years ago, uh, a few searchers had the, the, the already this idea, and to see maybe. The, the elements at the surface are not connected uh, physically, but uh, they can interact by means of the propagation of wave inside the soil. As we see in this model, this, uh, this uh, Kelvin Voigt model, that uh, the, we have to introduce the dumping effect. So in very soft soil, the dumping effect is very strong. So maybe the, the, the effect of the propagation as a secondary source by means of this uh, element of the surface could be very attenuated 
uh, with the distance. So uh, in this type of uh, discussion of uh, the condition of validity, we don't have to forget that uh, the effect of the, the soil on the soft soil on the attenuation of the propagation uh, between each element is very, very huge. Uh, sometimes we can't observe anything. Uh, we have um, between the element uh, 10 uh, meters after uh, the, the building in the soil because the effect of the the twisting of the displacement of, uh, of the building absolutely uh, attenuated. But uh, for quite strong earthquake, uh, we can see again uh, the effect of this displacement around the building. This is a strong aspect uh, that we have to take into account uh, for people uh, doing uh, modelization of um, a set of oscillator of the surface. So we can see here that uh, the bending moment and the shear moment, shear load at the, at the basement of this uh, huge tall building is very important that uh, and we can see the deformation around the building itself. The deformation around the building itself on, on the model presented here uh, with um, interaction uh, with uh, impedance function at for one of consequence, but many others are to be described, that uh, this is a modification of the, for the fundamental period. Uh, um, this is a trend to, 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 to have a, a more longer period equivalent due to this displacement at the base of the element. So we can try and, and discuss with this and to conclude so for the, this aspect of the, all type of structure at the surface. Uh, the interest is to see that uh, according to the range of frequency of all this typology of building, we have the chance to say that according to the frequency content of the earthquake, most of this structure could be concerned by a, a resonance aspect of uh, uh, under seismic disturbance because we have the connection with the, the range of frequency or not so for three or eight hertz, but we have the amplification of the of the soil and modifying the, the frequency uh, due to the soil. So all these elements could react as uh, as resonator, but could be concerned by the stability due to the resonance too. So we discuss a lot uh, about uh, the structuration of the soil because uh, for a while the Menard company uh, did a very impressive uh, work site. Uh, based on, uh, on densification of soil. Uh, so this is uh, this uh, absolutely geometrical pattern and soil was interesting to discuss and say maybe are we able to, to do something more, uh, more significant like uh, this one because this the, the depth of each uh, uh, cylindrical hole is about four to five meters. We, it's becoming very interesting because due to the due to the due to the vicinity of each hole, uh, we are starting to interact in soft soil with uh, incoming wave in this uh, in this element. So this is still uh, still interesting because um, for the future we are wondering about the effect of the coupling of the of the the resonance of the holes uh, simulated as an Elmos resonator the coupling effect uh, with the bottom of the hole uh, with the effect of uh, the Elmo's resonator. So maybe these elements are, are quite um, uh, resonating in the soil. This is one of the condition to, to have the metamaterials to have obviously a diffraction effect inside, but not only. Uh, we have to, to, to investigate about the, the local resonance of this element, the, this type of vibration could be, could be real, as the same for the, the rigid inclusion, vibrating in very soft soil. This is the reason why soft soil is very important to, to precise in the, in the domain of uh, validity. Uh, obviously, uh, rigid inclusion in a quite uh, stiff uh, material, it's quite it's very difficult to solicit the, the, the resonance of this element, but we can see uh, an interesting approach is the contrast of uh, the young modulus between this element. For very soft soil, we are speaking about uh, uh, one, three, four, five uh, uh, MPA uh, value. The concrete is uh, up to 
25,000 uh, MPA. So the contrast uh, in for the young moduli uh, are around 1,000 to 10,000. So we have good condition of contrast for studying uh, the aspect of propagating uh, wave in this uh, this medium. Uh, for the future, we are looking for, uh, on over company, are looking for the possibility to test uh, the, the wood pile. Wood pile could be very interesting too, because uh, we can uh, have a, a good, uh, a good uh, uh, comp component, a way to react to the, to the waves. Uh, could be very interesting to explore. This is for the future. But the, the building itself is made of um, is made most of the time of uh, structure foundation with a geometrical pattern at the surface. In these two examples, this is shallow foundation, um, and uh, at the, the left hand side of the, the presentation, and we have uh, piles uh, in Manhattan uh, in the right part. So we can see this. This is quite a striking effect. Is the, the huge density of this element in the soil. And at the beginning of this uh, research, we are very uh, surprised by uh, the modification of the solid itself, not only by all the aspect of diffraction, complexity of diffraction and sediment, but uh, for the first time, the, only the substitution, the, the substitution ratio could be very, very, very important. And what we know today about uh, phononic uh, crystals is that the, to observe something very interesting, uh, in dynamics uh, is to have uh, around 30 to 50 percent of uh, substitution ratio to be sure to to observe something uh, in the, in this structure soil let's have a look on this uh, this concept uh, for wave front coming from uh, the depth on the surface and propagating a surface you can define a, uh, an apparent velocity at the surface, uh, according to the hypothesis of uh, planar wave front. So, uh, coming from the, the concept of uh, array of sensor as a, as a huge radar with an aperture concrete and the maximum distance between each sensor, you can see the wave from propagating on this. And what we try to explore for the future, this aspect, so for very soft soil on propagation inside the soil, around uh, 100 meters per second for the, the shear waves, well, we can see it's the uh, a shift uh, on the displacement uh, due to the wave from propagating inside the structure. And maybe the difference between the sensor is that uh, all the elements are coupled each other. Uh, so the, the complexity of a long building um, traveled by uh, this type of wave could be uh, to have to be analyzed uh, in depth because it's not so, uh, so a simple problem. Two years ago, um, we only did the comparison uh, with an ancient structure. This is the amphitheater of the city of uh, Arles uh, in the south of France. This is uh, was built uh, 100 uh, in the first century uh, before Christ, and what is very surprising in uh, this presentation of the two models is that the the rate of substitution and the way to 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 construct the the foundation of this element uh, is very close to uh, the famous uh, Fresnel Institute cloak. Uh, which is uh, which is uh, circular for the in reality, but the density of element and the distribution is very very close. When we do the superposition of the two map of elements, it's very surprising that we have uh, quite only uh, one pillar of difference. And what we can observe in the the Fresnel cloak is that uh, uh, it. As the, have the ability to concentrate the energy inside the corridors. On, as the corridor is going uh, finest to the center, the energy is trying to go um, in the circular, uh, uh, circular displacement. And the, pro the property is to uh, modify the distribution and the energy is not able to going uh, to the, the central part of the system. So, uh, we don't we don't do at this time uh, any any conclusion about uh, the property of the amphitheater 
Roman amphitheater to 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 modify the propagation of the of the energy around. But this is this is absolutely interesting to see the the comparison of this. And we have test with Sebastian Geno uh, in finite element uh, model the the way to with a, with a flexural wave of 35 meter length. Uh, and we try to understand how the distribution can can react with the this type of amphitheater or Fresnel uh, Fresnel model, and we can see that the cap capability of this element to reconstruct the signal at uh, at the end of uh, the structure, uh, making making it a little bit uh, invisible for an observator inside. We have no uh, deformation uh, visible tray that can that can let us think there is an object between the source and the observator. So we are still trying to identify um, all the specific uh, dynamic response of, uh, of a very uh, characteristic building in very dense urban density of construction like this. Uh, the one in the central part is, uh, is seem to be an almost resonator, for example. So as depicted uh, before, uh, the concept of uh, plate with elastic model uh, depicted by uh, Bogdan and Gurianu uh, is to say maybe you can play a little bit with the with the concentration of energy uh, depending on the frequency. Okay, that's uh, the first uh, approach. Very interesting. I'm still exploring this, but uh, one of the aspect uh, depicted at the beginning of my presentation is to say that. Uh, we have a, a, an important loss of energy due to, to the attenuation of the, the soft soil in some condition, but we can be interested by the stiff soil too. So for this example, we try to identify uh, uh, in Lyon, for example, uh, uh, an equivalent model with inertia of uh, this uh, part of uh, construction in, in the town and to define a lot of uh, element close each other and to try to identify if this element have a specific uh, dynamic response alone or a global uh, dynamic response due to all this resonator located uh, very close. So for four models, quite simplistic, uh, we have decided to, to describe uh, one year ago, two years ago, it's about uh, the first one, uh, is the, the, the structure soil we file or thing like this. And uh, another one, a little bit sophisticated about taking into account um, the local uh, vibration and the capability of the, the, the buried mass to, to vibrate, and to create uh, interesting uh, properties, uh, to open the frequency band gap, for, for example. Uh, we studied the above surface resonator. So the, the, the terminology of metamaterials had, had progressed a lot. Uh, we are not exactly in the, in the definition of a metamaterial. It's a metamaterial is a thing that uh, handmade, uh, uh, handmade materials, not natural, uh, made of uh, element is modification of the, the properties uh, on local resonance. So we have a little bit extending the definition. And we have put in this definition the exotic materials too. Bogdan Ngorianu is one of the specialists of this, uh, this concept uh, to try to explore what we can do with the modification of the, of the element at the base of the thing. So maybe the most uh, realistic model is to take uh, more into account not only the structural soil, because structural soil uh, can provide a change of uh, of the vibration put at the basement. But what is very interesting is to see that uh, at uh, each stage of uh, the element coming from the substratum to the soil, structure soil, and the uh, interaction with the, the soil uh, characterized by uh, uh, Kelvin Voigt model and the building itself, we can have a, a composition of, uh, of effect and the composition of this effect much more interesting than the, the modification of the, the soil uh, itself. Because we have demonstrated that we are able to, to transform the distribution of the soil thanks to structured soil, but this is not only the interest. The interest is to see what is the global effect of the, the this modification. 
So let's have a look on the transformation. Uh, I go a little bit uh, quickly. Um, in geotechnical, uh, in geotechnics and earthquake engineering, most of the time we don't know uh, exactly the distribution of the soil, each layer with the property of, of each layer. This is a, the complexity for, for us is to have very a good uh, representative value for all these elements, the thickness, the young modulus, the density on the shear wave velocity. But for some cases, we have the exactly the definition of all these elements. We have the information thanks to core drilling or all type of uh, information on, on site for worksite too, uh, as we did a lot of uh, holes in the site in the, the element. And most of the time we are looking for, for, the, for the design of the surface, a quarter of, low, of length uh, soil uh, that uh, give us the fundamental period for this time. So let's have a look on this. Uh, this is uh, the very classic uh, aspect. We have the, the information at the base of the column of soil. This is the, the first uh, graph. Uh, in the left hand side, uh, made with acceleration, okay, horizontal acceleration. We have uh, the spectral in the transform uh, Fourier uh, domain. We have the information. We can see that this is a, a signal uh, bringing uh, two hertz uh, energy, two to 0.5 hertz energy. We can define most of the time a theoretical uh, transfer function uh, for um, a known soil. This is uh, the element uh, in the middle of this element. So it's uh, quite geometrical according to the frequency. The product of this uh, transfer function with the, 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 the signal coming at the basement give us uh, an amplification around uh, one hertz. So the transformation uh, of the signal is very important to this type of uh, configuration and pattern of soil. Uh, we have to define obviously uh, Damping return inside the, the formation is not so impressive at the surface. Let's have a look uh, on the densification. The densification is not so uh, without consequences because uh, for homogeneous uh, medium we have um, the same phase velocity and group velocity. But uh, uh, when we have the densification at the surface and creating a, a new layer at the surface with other properties. Uh, we introduce the, the dispersion of uh, Rayleigh waves uh, with different uh, phase uh, velocity and group velocity, uh, depending now on the frequency. Um, a strong consequence of this, and it could be also a strategy. Uh, we can see for a uh, homogeneous medium, we can uh, reall one now uh, at the top of the presentation, the ellipticity uh, representing the the motion at the surface for Rayleigh wave, uh, we can see that we can represent this um, in the frequency domain too. Uh, there is a frequency dependence uh, for the incoming signal uh, to, the, uh, to the, the geometry of the ellipticity of the surface. So when we have two layer uh, model, uh, if we densify a lot or modifying a lot the first surface for this 1D model, we can have uh, a displacement for relay wave, uh, depending on the vertical or the horizontal uh, element. Sometimes it could be very horizontal or vertical, or this could be uh, theoretically a strategy to, to, for the building. The building is very sensitive to horizontal one uh, component. Uh, if we have only vertical component, uh, this is quite be interesting to explore. For a multi-layer, I go a little bit faster. For multi-layer element, we can define uh, properties of all these elements. We can have the transfer function for for ten uh, for five uh, five elements uh, made of two components, uh, as presented in this uh, transfer function. As I said at the beginning, uh, most of the time it's difficult to have the the right definition of, of all these properties. But for some case, we can have this information. We can uh, try to observe the difference between homogenization model or 10 elements. And for a specialist of ground improvement, the, the, the best way to, to act is to modify, is to modify uh, uh, only, uh, only a, a small parts of the volume, but uh, wanting to have the, the great uh, transformation of the signal at the surface. This is, uh, this is the objective, for, for example. So, 
I took uh, the same example as before, uh, but now the difference is, and I, I have modified uh, an element in the middle, the, the soil, the soft soil is becoming now uh, a stiff soil, uh, number two, with 800 meter uh, speed, and uh, the other one is only on 100 meter. I have to put uh, the damping ratio on this element. So you can see now the, the effect of this transformation is not uh, so interesting because we have a modification of the surface uh, after our treatment. This is the same effect uh, as before, the modification of the surface of the signal coming at the basement. So taking into account uh, now the, the, the displacement of the, of the building, uh, modelize all uh, of uh, one degree of uh, Liberty model. Uh, this model is depending on the rigidity, the flexibility, on the mass of the element. We can summarize all the typology of a structure only by the fundamental period of this element. This is the way to the most uh, the most common way to characterize the, the lateral force for a building. So according to uh, this flexibility, uh, we can apply uh, an horizontal force. Uh, deducted by the, the acceleration with uh, uh, the gravity of this element. Making this type of uh, analysis, so the, all the maximum displacement according to the, to the period of the building is uh, pointed out on, the, on this graph. On, we can draw uh, the, spec, the elastic spectrum from this. Uh, going back to to the to the previous uh, model we made uh, this treatment this is a three meter uh, treatment on this element and you can see at the surface the consequences of the treatment it's not so it's not so bad because um, i have a, a stronger deamplification uh, for um, for bidding around the uh, whole 0.5 uh, period and uh, we have a little translation of the peak uh, on um, a peak appear around uh, 0.8. So the, the, the global concept say maybe in the periodic elements, uh, we have all the effect of periodic elements, so the filtering effect and, and so on, but it's very interesting to take into account all the, the reaction of the, the soil, the amplification, the filtering effect, and at the surface, the dynamic response of the element came into this. So the, the global element is, uh, is made uh, as, uh, as three or four components to take into account. We have it obviously as a whole model to, to, to inform all these parameters, obviously. Going back to, to holes on the experiments of um, 2012, uh, we made this uh, transformation of the soil with a, a rate of substitution. Uh, for three to nine hertz for a huge hole of two meter diameter and for 50 hertz for this element. Uh, so for both cases, we had observed the scattering effect and the Bragg, uh, Bragg mirror effect for, for both. Uh, but what is interesting to, to analyze is to do the same, uh, the same approach as before to say, uh, what about the structuration of the soil in the real um, reaction of the building uh, that will be uh, uh, after after the, the lens and the, all the transformation of the frequency content of the, the signal uh, thanks to um, the structure soil uh, could be estimated uh, doing the same analysis of the vibrating of the, soil, of the, of the oscillator. And you can see in, uh, in this, the addition of uh, holes inside the, the virgin soil uh, modify a little bit the, the the spectral ratio of H over V. And we have a deamplification around five to eight Hertz uh, for the case with holes. And the consequence uh, on the, a building put uh, out uh, the, 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 the lens is to have a, a transformation of, of the, the equivalent force of loading applied to the element. So, uh, the conclusion of this, uh, this uh, study is to say that uh, the, the structuration of the soil uh, is, not, uh, is not so, um, uh, it, it could be uh, important in, in the dynamic response of the, the vicinity. 
So for the future, what we we try to 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 develop, say, all the all type of uh, building inside uh, react to the noise made by the, the vibration of the city, and we have uh, the possibility to define a, a transfer function that characterizing uh, both the the building uh, behavior on the soil uh, property. We are not uh, uh, in obligation to define exactly all the properties uh, of the characterization of the soil, but only have a transfer function characterizing only the, the dynamic response of the surface. Uh, I'm going a little bit. So the, the strategy of this is to, is to say we are exploring the, the site effects uh, and the soil structure interaction effects. Uh, both uh, with the the reality of the geology of the soil, but but also with all the aspects of interaction with uh, with the foundation with the soil, but also all the effects of the modification of the of the soil by uh, inclusion and something else. In in the graph in the upper part and the right place, we can see that uh, according the contrast of uh, uh, stiffness between the, the building, K ho, ho, this is the, the stiffness of the building, compared to the, the stiffness of the soil, you can see that for a specific value, the building is coming stiffer than the soil. So for this element, the equivalent uh, fundamental period is growing very quickly, in a, obviously a theoretical approach. So for this, we have a, a strong, uh, soil structure interaction effect but also a problem of stability uh, due to the to the strong displacement of the element uh, at the surface but for for the other so what is the the concept of invisibility not about the distribution of energy the invisibility for building is also to to avoid all the deleterious simplification uh, coming from the, the soil and all the all the aspect of amplification uh, uh, coming from the, the building itself. Just uh, just to illustrate a point, and this is uh, the end of my presentation. Just to see that uh, we can see that only a raft, rigid raft, uh, on the soil, we can observe that uh, if we want to to see the interaction with this infinite plate on on the soil, modelized by this. Uh, by all these uh, elements, uh, we can see that we have uh, the, the reaction of the soil, the dispersion diagram. We have a, a frequency uh, cutoff uh, effect due to the plate uh, laying on the soft soil. I suggest to go to, to the end to the energy harvesting to conclude. Another way to to, to develop the conclusion of uh, this structured soil made of all is to see that uh, uh, we had observed that we have a concentration of energy uh, in the corridor of this element. And maybe one aspect we are exploring too is to say, uh, are we able to, to trap this energy or to, to transform it to something uh, available uh, for any type of uh, application? This is a, a strong disturbance inside the inside the corridors and to to achieve this element one point to to achieve to try to 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 understand all this aspect of vibrating effect in urban city is to detour a little bit uh, the function of the optic fiber in the city and trying to to transform it uh, thanks to a project in lyon uh, led by uh, benoit Tozin at uh, the Lyon University uh, is try to identify all the information we are able to to capture thanks to this uh, to this uh, huge net of uh, optic fiber both to identify the component of uh, the the secondary source uh, brought by by all the all the building at the surface but also to capture also uh, uh, all type of earthquake inside. Thank you for your attention.